Hello and welcome to the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. And with me today, Troy Paredes of Paredes Strategies, a founder of that, also former SEC commissioner and uh, also podcaster. Yeah. So we'll talk more about that in a second. Okay. Vince Molinari, CEO of Liquidum Capital, as always. Hello, Thank Jane. you. Let's start with your podcast, Appetite for Disruption. So yep. you kind of talk about a lot of these interesting subjects are going on blockchain. And tell me a little bit about what you're looking for in that podcast. Yeah, we're looking, frankly, mm -hmm. to talk to interesting folks doing interesting stuff. And my co-host and I thought that FinTech, given our background, given my background, focusing on finance yeah. and regulation, having been a commissioner at the SEC, and with so much going on. And one of the things that I found particularly interesting is when you talk to folks in the space, you do realize the breadth of what people are trying to solve for and the issues that they're focused on. And it's everything from the proverbial folks in a garage up to the largest uh, financial institutions yeah. uh, on Wall Street who are thinking about how do we take advantage of technology, not just in terms of the business, but also in terms of the regulatory side of things, the compliance side of things. A lot of people are familiar with the phrase reg tech, mm -hmm. that's simply taking the technology that's available and the things which are cutting edge and asking the following question, how can we take advantage of those technological advancements and help them and, and use them to help us better and more effectively comply? And that can be natural language processing, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and of course, blockchain. Mm -hmm. So I think we're really at a very fascinating point where some of those uh, applications have been brought to bear, but where I think there's still a whole heck of a lot in front of us. An aspect of it too, frankly, which I think is really interesting that some folks may not uh, appreciate as much, um, is the fact that the regulators are focusing on how they themselves can be using these technologies when it comes to their examination, their inspection, their supervision, and even the point. development of their enforcement cases. Yeah. So as I like to tell folks, if your regulator is using these technologies, you may want to ask yourself, how are we using these technologies yeah. so that we don't find ourselves behind what the regulators are capable of doing? And the regulators are talking about this space a lot lately. Um, what's your sense of what's going on in their heads involving digital assets? Yeah, so I think what's going on in their heads is a couple of things. One, trying to ask the question, you know, do, do we, as to each individual regulator, what are our authorities? What jurisdiction do we have and do we think that we need additional uh, authority or do we think somebody in the uh, landscape at the federal or state level needs additional authority? I think number two, it is this question of balance where you want to have, you indeed need to have a sound, sensible, reasonable regulatory environment you need to have rules of the road. You need to make sure that those rules of the road are being uh, enforced. So in the context of the federal securities laws, you know, to the extent you have a token which the SEC decides qualifies as a security, well, then you trigger the federal securities laws on all that that entails. At the same time, particularly, I think, when you throw blockchain more generally into the mix, what you don't want to do, and I say this as somebody who thought a lot about this when I was in government, what you don't want to do is have an approach that's going to stifle beneficial innovation. You don't want to have an approach which is going to cause those things that would actually, with time, be brought to market and make all of us better off by improving our standard of living be somehow stifled. That is easier to identify, I think, as a challenge that needs to be addressed than it is to address it. And the addressing of it does take some time, but I'm heartened by, I think, uh, that that's kind of where the regulators are focused in terms of trying to strike that appropriate yeah, and these balance. early days of technology is always feels a little wild west, and it's kind of like, what's got promise, what doesn't, what's fraudulent, what's not, it's really tough. So, now Vince, we've talked a lot about the SEC and the CFTC and the divisions between the two and the regulatory bodies. Um, has there been any of that kind of sorted out yet, or where does that stand? I don't know if it's being sorted out yet, but I think it's in the process, and I think Troy makes a couple of great points, not uh, surprisingly at all. But I think when you look at uh, analogy, maybe back to the Jobs Act, the, the passage of the Jobs Act and portions of the rulemaking may have been anticipated in 180 days, but there was a very thoughtful process, although quite a lot of people anxious, including myself, for what amounted a four or five year period. But the outcome of that was very thoughtful rulemaking versus reactionary to what was there at the moment. So I think we're seeing somewhat similar thought process to is today, and that's why I think you're seeing engagement with CFTC and SEC being thoughtful. Again, to Troy's point, how do we utilize these tools of today to foster greater capital formation in a responsible way while protecting investors? I think you're seeing the states get involved. And well, NASA. I was just going to ask about that. Wyoming has done some 
nothing on this, right? So can you bring us up to speed on that and what's going on with some well, states? I, I think you've got a number of issues, both going back to enforcement and, and cease and desist coming from states that are preempting. And now you have Wyoming holistically looking at a whole new framework, intrastate, right? And that's the key okay. part, intrastate. So I think there are some challenges when you, when you look within a state, uh, applaud Wyoming and the thought process and the innovation to say, there is not a security token in the state, and these are all effectively utility tokens. Uh, treating tokens as property and having them exempt from taxes. Well, that could be a major boon for Wyoming and innovation intrastate, but you do get into the challenges of federal securities laws when you start to move outside the boundaries. So there is some permissioning layers, perhaps. It, it speaks to less open source, right? where you need some level of centralization to control blockchain and tokenization intrastate. So this is all awesomely exciting. And I think just to touch on Troy's other point, because I think it is not often spoken about, and I think it, it's really great to have the lens of a former regulator sitting here with us. It's the tools that these bring to bear for the regulators that are helpful. So when we can then put standardization and best practice into the process where we have audit trails, we have order books, we have last pricing displayed, we have continuity of information across the spectrum, I think allows regulators a better um, access point to do their job, but also fairer markets. So I, th I think it all uh, uh, converges at a great point for us. And if I can just pick up on, on that last point, <laughs> as Vince was picking up on my <laughs> point, I also do think it's important in the discussion around digital assets, cryptocurrencies and the like, tokens, uh, et cetera, <clears throat> that that's not the same discussion as talking about blockchain more generally. Okay. And when you think about the power of blockchain, entirely aside from the digital assets and what that's going to mean, what it is already starting to mean, mm -hmm. when you really take a step back and put it in probably too simplistic of terms, you know, blockchain in terms of the power to be a ledger, a way of recording and tracking and, and audit trail uh, and the like and sharing of information when it comes to, geez, just about every type of interaction, and when you think about that as being the scope, if you will, of, of the potential set of instances and use cases and applications of blockchain, that's enormous. And there's an incredible amount of potential there oh, yeah. that is entirely aside from how other debates play themselves out. That's right. They just really the use assets. the technology, the blockchain they use the technology. technology. Exactly. It's a totally different. So, um, looking forward to 2018, what are yeah. some things you'll be watching this year, Troy? Yeah, what I'm going to watch are a couple of things. Well, one is, I think it's been very notable the way in which very openly and publicly um, Chairman Clayton and, and Giancarlo, the SEC and CFTC, have been uh, on the same page. Uh, their op-ed, for example, that they did uh, jointly. Yes. They testified jointly. That, that was crucial because they were, that they it did crucial. it jointly. That was really it's, a key. It's, it's yeah. crucial. And I think that is really important to reflecting the conversations that are taking a place uh, across government. And a big part of the a big aspect, the benefit of that is again making sure that the regime, however it ultimately unfolds, coheres, makes sense, is sensible, is sound, and strikes the appropriate balances. That coordination is really important. And I think if you haven't spent time in D.C., you may, you know, think, oh, well, what's so special about that? Well, you don't always see that, yeah. and you don't always see it in that kind of open and obvious way. And I think that's a real plus, and I'll look for more of that. Number two, say keep an eye on the enforcement actions. I think in terms of rulemaking, let alone legislation, whether or not there'll be any, that will be in the future. And again, it's not even clear that the decision will be that there is necessarily more that needs to be done. But whatever happens on the rulemaking, regu regulatory, um, and, and legislative front, keep an eye on the enforcement actions. That's the regulators themselves using the authorities they have. They've already been using those authorities, mm -hmm. and we've not seen the last of it. Okay. Vince, what are you looking for this year? Of course I agree with Troy, because he's so... <laughs> wonderfully attuned. I, I would just slightly extend the thought process as we see the collaboration here in the U.S. very clearly with CFTC, SEC, and I think NASA, and of course FINRA will be involved in that process. I see parallel paths happening globally, whether that's within uh, Europe or Asia, and I think we will begin to see collaboration with global regulators as this phenomenon is truly a global. Uh, the ability for smart contracts to transcend boundaries I think will require 
uh, much more collaboration of global regulators for the first time. Okay, it's going to be interesting to watch. I know that you're going to help us navigate our way through Anytime. all of this. As this is really revolutionary change. Yeah. It certainly could be. So, thank you so much, Troy Paredes, for joining Jane. us, founder of Paredes Strategies, former SEC commissioner, and appetite for disruption. Yep. I'm going to definitely listen to that. And thanks you as well, uh, Vince Molinari, a CEO you, of Liquid and Capital. And thank you for joining us on the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. Have a great day.